This interview is part of the James J. Blanchard Living Library of Michigan Political History. Lawrence B. Lindemer, it's a pleasure to have you here with the Michigan Political History Society. Well, it's great to talk to you, Bill. You know, there was a famous Broadway musical once called The Boys from Syracuse. But you're the boy from Syracuse. You were born in Syracuse, New York, and I think you had a family summer home on Skinny Atlas Lake in central New York. Isn't that right? Right. Uh, how and when did you come to Michigan uh, and why? I came to Michigan because I was married while I was in college in New York and uh, wanted to continue. And my wife, Becky, whom you knew, uh, uh, had Michigan roots and so forth, and they had a family farm in Stockbridge. And so we moved to the family farm, and I could commute to the University of Michigan, from which I later finished. And um, uh, that that's what, Becky is what brought me to Michigan. So you graduated from Michigan, I believe, in 1943? I was in the class right? of 43, okay. Bill, but I was called up. Uh, I had enlisted in uh, the uh, Air Force. Right and um, Army Air Corps, and uh, was called up before I graduated. And uh, that was somewhat of a story, too. Uh, but anyway, I, I was supposed to be allowed to graduate, and because of a number of circumstances, I did not. So I had to complete my uh, studies after I was in the service. After the war. No, no. While I was in the service, I was oh. stationed at Grand Forks, North Dakota, and uh, all of my professors at Michigan had enough of a record so that they could give me a passing grade, which was all that I needed. Sounds like you must have been a pretty good student. Well, I, I got through, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, uh, with the exception of one, Spanish-American history. <laughs> and in Grand Forks, North Dakota, there was very little on Spanish American uh, history. I wonder I can, why. Yeah. I wonder why. Anyway, I had to take an examination from that professor, and I am certain that I blew it. But <laughs> he, out of the kindness of his heart, and thinking mine might not come back anyway, uh, gave me a passing grade, and that's all I needed. So, so I, then, did you immediately go into law school after that? At, no, no. After the war, I did. After the war? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I... I, I Were you I, overseas in the war at all? No, okay. no, I was stateside. So when you went to Michigan after the war, then you got out like what, 1948, 49? 48. 48. Class of 48 right. law. It's 1950, and I believe you're only 29 years old, and you run for the State House of Representatives, and you defeat four other Republican candidates for the nomination, and you beat one of them, the runner-up, by only eight votes. Is that correct? Uh, A real cliffhanger? Yeah, there were four candidates, including the incumbent, Jake Shepherds. Oh. Okay. And uh, I, my recollection, Bill, is that I won by seven votes. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it was a squeaker. It was a squeaker. Yeah. So you served one term in the House. Now, during your time in the legislature, that two-year period, 1951-52, that was a fascinating period. Harry Truman was in his last two years as president. Uh, you had two Republican U.S. senators from Michigan at that time. Uh, you had a Republican-controlled legislature. Most of the statewide offices were Republican. But you had a Democratic governor, G. Menon Soapy Williams. What was it like at that time? Oh, it was, a, it was a fascinating time, and of course, I was just starting out uh, in uh, 1952, of course. I was defeated for uh, re-election. That was another close one, wasn't it? Like less than 300 votes or something. I, it, it was, it was yeah. close. I yeah. don't, I d that was a defeat, so I don't uh, have Talk that. Talk about it. 
locked in my locked memory. In, well, Stockbridge wasn't exactly a major population base. That no. was probably one of your problems. Well, it it <laughs> it was, and and uh, the uh, the guy that ran against me, John McCune, had been my manager two years earlier. Wow. I uh, lived in East Lansing and was a, a very prominent good guy. Well, good he guy. had a East Lansing population base. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think it's kind of remarkable, uh, we'll get to this in a minute, that only five years after you serve a single term in the state house, and you're still only something like 31 years old when you left the house, uh, you were elected state chairman. We'll get to that in a second. But talking about that time of yours in the House, how often did legislators meet at that time? I mean, uh, and did they recess for the year, adjourn for the year in the spring, uh, and not come back for the rest of the year? Uh, what were the uh, major power brokers, the speaker and the Senate majority leader like? How did they interface with Governor Williams, who was of the opposite party at that time? You know, I, I think the relationship was pretty good. Uh, the Speaker of the House was Victor Knox from uh, Sault Ste. Marie. Right. And uh, he was he was very good to me. He, uh, we, we got along well. I liked him. Uh, and it, it, it was an interesting time. Uh, you know... Uh, uh, Did you meet year-round? No, we did not, yeah. Bill. We we generally uh, closed the session in May or June, and uh, then, if necessary, we were called back into a special session, which would not be long in in duration. But uh, the pay wasn't very good, was it? I <laughs> think the pay was twenty one hundred dollars a year. And did you have to share a secretary with a whole oh, bunch yeah. of other legislators? Yes. yes. I was a member of the Judiciary Committee, and the uh, lady that served as secretary to the Judiciary Committee served as secretary to those of us who were <laughs> members of that committee. So, you, you know, it... Uh, it was a totally different time. Oh, yes, absolutely. You didn't have the contact with your constituents then that you do now. You didn't get out uh, letters and so forth uh, with great frequency. You were pretty much on your own. Wasn't there a speech delivered to the legislature by a famous general at the time oh, you were there? Oh, yes. Yes, while I was in the legislature, Douglas MacArthur wow. had been fired by Harry Truman and uh, was doing the rounds uh, of the throughout the United States. I suspect at that time he was thinking that perhaps he might run uh, for office, which he did not do. But he did come and, and speak to the legislature, and I have a clear recollection of that. Did he try out his famous line, old soldiers never die, oh, they yes. just fade away? Oh, yes. So he actually probably said it here in Lansing first before he got down to Washington. I'm not sure whether it was first here or first somewhere else, but it, it was a line that he knew very well and, uh, and uh, had served him well. Okay, now, when you were in the legislature, and maybe this happened right after you got out of law school, even before you were elected to that one term in the House, you joined a law firm. Was it the law firm with which you were identified for a long time? No. Okay. No, uh, I did not join a law firm. I, I established a solo practice. I worked uh, some with a lawyer in Mason, Raymond McLean. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I did not have any tie with the firm. And, uh, but I, uh, I, I enjoyed it. I was an assistant prosecuting attorney for two years. Oh, okay. And while I was assistant prosecuting attorney, at that time we could maintain offices uh, for private practice outside of regular business right. hours. Right. And I used to, uh, I used to uh, uh, go to the office of the prosecutor uh, five days a week, and I think our hours were nine to five or whenever you finished. And then I, I uh, operated out of my uh, Stockbridge office 
in the evenings and on Saturdays and um, <laughs> any other time. Right. Uh, right. But so I, I had a very full uh, uh, use of my time at, right. uh, in those years.